All right, everybody, let's go ahead and uh, get started this afternoon. My name's Byron. Let's go ahead and uh, start in child's pose while we start to set up, you know, the foundation of the practice. So before we get the body right, let's just take a minute here and get the mind right. From a physical perspective, today's class will be about, uh, it's a flow class, so it's continual movement. Unrushed, continual movement. So what that really means, a lot of you that are more experienced understand that a flow class means that it's not just moving your body, it's moving your breath with your body. So the first step here is just to start to feel your breath. Before all that activity happens, feel the non-activity of just being nice and still in your body. And as you're nice and still in your body, feel your breath. Start to notice it gets a little deeper. A little more rhythmic. Uh, so slowing down the breath is, uh, can become crucial to staying in a flow. So that's why we practice what's called the uh, ujjayi sound, or the ocean sounding breath. If you're unfamiliar with that, you just want to find that glottis muscle, that flap that covers the back of, the, of your throat. And you want to start to shrink that opening of your back of your throat down a little bit. So it's kind of like the equivalent of drinking out of a straw as opposed to just drinking out of a glass. Yeah, you'll feel the friction of the breath a little more, and you can actually turn the volume of your breath up a notch or two. So it's not a library. And then if you ever start to lose sight of the rhythmic breath, just come back here to child's pose until you find it, and then you can proceed. Or if you start to get fatigued. Good. So let's go ahead and build that momentum, reaching the arms out in front of us. Let's go ahead and rock up onto the hands and the knees. That's your first transition. Then exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. So if you need to pedal the legs, pedal the legs, lift the leg, do whatever is necessary to release any fidgety energy. Yeah, but just stay with the rhythmic quality of your breath. Good. Spread your fingers so wide, it's like you're trying to cover the whole mat with your hand. And you don't really even need your fingers too much. Drive the... Uh, you know, the thumb, yes, you do, and the index, maybe so, but the rest of the fingers, they're definitely pressing. But press the ball of, and the heel of your hand into the floor. Yeah, I've seen some of the best downward-facing dogs I've ever seen are done with people with, with like, two fingers. Yeah, so really drive the whole hand down. Good. Now slide forward to plank pose. Look at your hands. Make sure the index finger points straight ahead. Or you can even turn them out slightly towards 1 o'clock with the right index finger, towards 11 o'clock with the, the left index. That's where I put mine. Yeah, and then really drive the floor away from you. Good. Bring your forearms down to the ground one by one. So we call it forearm plank. So the first, you know, sequence of this class, we're not going to do any traditional vinyasas for those of you that know Cobra and that whole little flow movement. We'll add that into the second series. Now this will be a way of, uh, for us to uh, really generate body heat and use core strength. Uh, but for now, go ahead and start to muscle your way back up to plank. Palm by palm, start to press your way back up. And just take an inhale and plank, downward facing dog as you exhale. Go ahead and unplug your hands, crawl them to the back of the mat so you're in a forward fold. Yeah, and grab your opposite elbows, just kind of hang out here. Yeah, let gravity become your ally. As you might sway a little bit left, a little bit right. Good. And just an, an opportunity to increase the momentum of your breath and momentum of your practice. If it makes sense, take your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers. If that's difficult for you, grab a towel and connect the hands with the towel instead or strap. And maybe straighten out the arms, send the knuckles off the back. Good. So group classes are great in the sense that you can feel the energy around you. You know, it's really a contagious type of energy. So let the breath really you know, influence your neighbor. But on the, at the same time, let your breath distract you from any distractions that might happen. You, know, you never know, you know, what your crazy neighbor might do. Good. Release your hands down to the ground. Slide your hands up to your shin bones. Pull your heart forward. Stay forward here. Just imagine as though someone super glued the crown of your head to the front of the room. 
And then notice a little micro bend in your knees. Uh, that, knee, that, that bend in your knees is protecting your back and stacking the knees over the ankles. Stay flat in your back. Bring your hands to your hips. Pull the lower belly in, elbows towards each other, and then root down to stand all the way up. Uh, bring the hands to the heart center. Close the eyes. Just stand tall. And then how about the biggest breath today so far? Big inhale through the nose. Hold the breath. And then open the mouth, let it go. <sighs> Good, open the eyes. Travel up to the top of the mat. So feet are hips width apart. Yeah, next inhale, sweep your arms up. Sweep them over the head. And then forward fold as you exhale. Bend at the waist. Good, lead with your heart. And now flat back inhale. We already rehearsed that. Just fold in as you exhale. Step your left leg to the back of the mat. Nice big step. Fingers on the ground. Come up to your fingertips. Pull your heart forward. And then reach your arms down by your sides. As one of my favorite instructors of all time would say, razor sharp with your left leg in this pose. So meaning you don't want to droop with your left knee. Good. And then as you bend your left knee a little bit, reach the arms straight up, coming into crescent pose. And draw the tailbone down. Uh, notice if you have a habit of spilling the lower belly out forward. Try to con contract the belly so you're compact. And then from that compact center, try to extend outwards through the fingertips, Good. really getting big. A nice job. Take one more inhale. Bring your hands down to the ground. Keep them on the ground. Just step your left foot forward to meet your right. Good. Flat back inhale like we've done. Fold in, exhale, step your right leg back. Same thing. Fingertips, heart pulls forward, back leg razor sharp. Reach your arms down by your sides. And so it's like a runner's lunge. And just notice what your eyes are doing. You know, yes, they're open, but they're not just darting around the room. A crescent pose. Simultaneously bend your back knee, reach your arms up vertically. And again, condense the belly, but spread outwards. Like you're trying to touch the ceiling with the fingertips and trying to touch the floor with your shoulders. A nice job. Take one more extending inhale. Hands to the ground. Keep them down. Step your right foot forward, top of the mat. Good flat back inhale. Step back to plank position. Lower your forearms down to the ground one by one. Yeah, so when you're doing this forearm plank, I either want your palms flat or fingers interlaced. So, yeah, increase the surface area here. And if you have a tendency to sag in the lower back, definitely set the knees down if you need to. But otherwise, here comes our first back bend of the day. We call it sphinx pose. So lay the body down. Yeah, make sure there's a vertical line from shoulder to elbow. So for some of you that are newer, crawl the hands a little bit forward. Good. Close your eyes for a moment and feel where your back is bending. Just feel it. You don't have to see it. Obviously, you can't see it. That's your thoracic spine. That's where you want to bend your back, especially when we move into cobra and upward facing dog. Good. Maybe even climb the, the, the curve of your spine higher and higher. Good buffer. Now go ahead and open the eyes again. Curl the toes under again. Lift your knees, thighs, lower belly off the floor. Back to what's called forearm or dolphin plank pose. Just three breaths. Feel the restraint here. And yeah, maybe lift your navel an inch higher. Good. And then without swiveling your hips too much, palm by palm, let's come back to plank pose. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. Lift your hips. Good job. Inhale, wind your hips back, bend your knees, look forward, and then step or lightly hop to the top of the mat as you exhale. Good. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold and exhale to deepen. Stand up, sweep the arms up and over your head, and then pull the hands where the heart is. Exhale. Good. Do that again. Inhale, sweep and reach full range of breath. Forward fold, exhale, full range of motion. Good. Flat back, inhale, like a meditation. Good. Just step your left leg back as you exhale. Crescent pose as you inhale. Just take one breath, hands all the way up, and then exhale, hands all the way down to the ground. They stay there. Step forward, top of the mat. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold and exhale, deepen. Right leg steps back. One breath, rise, crescent pose. Good. Hands to the mat as you exhale. Step your right leg forward, top of the mat. Good. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Step back to plank position. Lower your forearms down one by one. Good. Good. Pull the chest forward. Draw the tailbone down. Flex your thighs. Again, palms are flat. 
And then how about back to Sphinx Pose? Lay the body down, vertical line, shoulder to elbow, arms parallel. Good. Now for a few of you that want to go a little deeper here, I wouldn't be one of those few, but you can lift your elbows off the floor. Palms stay where they are. It doesn't mean you have to straighten the arms, but it means you might consider it. And if you took that option, just make sure the shoulders are down away from the ears. Yeah, nice job. And then if you lifted your elbows, place them back down on the floor, recurl your toes, lift your knees, thighs, lower belly, back to forearm plank pose. And feel the restraint. Notice if you're resistant to this pose. Notice if you're excited about it. Either way, non-attachment to either of those emotions. Palm by palm, press your way back up plank pose. And let's meet in downward facing dog. Two more rounds of that. Inhale, lift your hips, bend your knees. Step or lightly hop to the top of the mat, please. Good, flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold in, exhale. Deep and stand up, sweep the arms up and over the head, and then pull the hands to heart center. Exhale. Good again. Inhale, sweep and reach. Connect with your breath. Forward fold, exhale, dip and dive. Good flat back. Inhale, lengthen. Fold in, step your left leg back, crescent. Inhale, reach up high as you can. Hands to the mat as you exhale. Keep them on the floor to step forward, and then flat back again. Good. Fold in, exhale, switch. Right leg steps back. Crescent pose, reach, one breath, hands to the mat, exhale, step your right foot forward, flat back, inhale, fingertips or shin, step back to plank pose again, lower your forearms down, yeah, so you're in this dolphin, this forearm plank, and it's just three breaths, yeah, the breath sounds really alive, I want you to stay with that the whole time, good, back to sphinx pose, next to last one of the day, Good. Your version of Sphinx. So legs are down. Maybe the arms are straight. Perhaps they're not. But if you lifted your elbows, forearms down, recurl the toes, knees lift, thighs lift. Back to forearm plank pose, three breath. Good. Feel the restraint in moving your hips and then muscle your way back up to plank pose again. Good downward facing dog, last round of this. Inhale, wind your hips back, bend your knees. Step or slingshot to the top of the mat, please. Good, flat back, inhale, find space. Fold in, exhale, find depth. Root down to rise, inhale, sweep your arms to the sky. And then hands where the heart is. Exhale, last time, inhale, sweeping and reaching. Arms rising, forward fold, exhale. Dipping and diving. Flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold in, step your left leg back. Last crescent pose today, reach up, inhale. Hands to the mat, exhale, left foot steps forward, flat back, inhale, fold in, exhale, right leg steps back, one breath, rise, crescent pose, hands to the mat, exhale, step forward, top of the mat, flat back, inhale, step back to plank, and then lower your forearms down, one by one, good, three deep breaths, good. Good. And then how about the last sphinx pose of the day? Lay the body down, release the tops of the feet. Feel the restorative nature of your back bend. Choose the one that you want, elbows down or up. Good. And then as you exhale, toes curled, knees lift, thighs lift, lower belly lifts, three deep breaths. And so we get to do one more of these at the end of the practice. It'll kind of be like the grand finale in a sense. But that's it for now. Palm by palm, press your way back up, plank pose. Nice job, downward facing dog. Everybody take a nice big inhale through the nose, and then open the mouth, let it go. <sighs> squeeze the right knee to your chest. Yeah, as you squeeze it in, and it's more like a plank, the shoulders are over the wrist, look at your right thumb and try to step your right foot right where your right thumb is. Spin your back foot flat on the ground, toes angled in slightly, we call it warrior one. Reach your arms up towards the sun. Yeah, let it all come from the back leg here. So in a sense, your left leg or your left foot is the steering wheel of your vehicle, and the hips are the tires. So use your left heel to steer your right hip back slightly. Good. And then maybe sink down, reach up. Same breath, inhale here. Hands to the mat as you exhale, right leg back. Take your first full traditional vinyasa, lower slow, into cobra or upward facing dog you choose. And then downward facing dog as you exhale. You can't win. You can't lose. It's yoga. Just breathe. Pull the left knee into your chest as we start our flow. Look at your left thumb. Step your left foot right there. Back foot flat again. Warrior one. 
see if you can feel the inseam of your right leg stretching. So you're driving through your right heel. Yeah, notice if the upper ribs are poking out. Try not to poke them out. Good. You're squeezing a block with your pinky fingers more than your thumbs. And then last inhale, reach up. And then hands to the mat as you exhale. Left leg back, perfect form, lower slow. Good. No rush. Feel the flow. Inhale, open your heart, literally and figuratively. And then downward facing dog eventually. Yeah, nice job. Linking back up with the breath. Palms flat, fingers spread wide, heels low, hips high. Take an inhale, bend the knees, look forward, step, float, or fly. Top of the mat, exhale. Good, flat back, inhale, lengthen. Fold in, exhale, deep. We call this one chair pose. So feet are parallel. It doesn't make much of a difference if they're touching or a foot apart. Yeah, just make sure they're parallel and you can see your toes. Now for this first chair pose, shift the weight into your right foot and lift your left foot up off the floor. So you're balancing. Good. If you want to change your hand position, I usually bring my hands to my heart. You can keep them where they are if you'd like. Warrior three, kick the left leg back, lay the torso forward. So you're in what's called airplane warrior three pose, basically balancing on your right leg. You'd imagine as though a square was in the center of your body and a circle was on the outside, like a bubble was surrounding you. So get tighter in the square and get bigger in the bubble. Touch the front wall, touch the back wall. Take one more inhale. Leg stays up, hands to the ground as you exhale. You drop your head. Maybe crawl the hands a little closer into your toes. Well, maybe not. You know, if it feels good, you got to do it. You know, eventually, you know, we're rewriting these books every single day, these yoga books that tell us what feels good, what to do. And so you got to feel what works in you. And last inhale here. Feet together, exhale, top of the mat. Flat back inhale, lengthen out. Fold in, exhale, back to chair pose, bend the knees, squat down, belly lifts. Let's shift the weight into the left foot this time. Take your time to peel your right foot up. Good, and then nice and steady, only when you're ready, warrior three, any hand position that helps you. And you know, sometimes if you want to burn both candles, or burn the candle at both ends, you can reach those arms forward. Otherwise, maybe down by your sides or on top of your thigh. Yeah. Balancing by definition is adjusting or adapting to every microsecond that takes place. It's hard to plan the rest of your day when you're in Warrior Three. You drop your hands to the floor, keep your right leg in the air. Try to burn a hole through the back wall with your right heel. Yeah, but at the same time, relax your neck. Yeah, use the muscles that you need to use, relax the ones that you don't. Yeah, just give it one last inhale here. Let's go feet together, top of the mat, exhale. Good, flat back, inhale, fingertips or the shin. Step or lightly hop your feet back, lower down. Keep your elbows in, in tight. Good, cobra upward facing dog until it feels just right. And then downward facing dog, steady breath, steady mind. Let's stay with the flow, adding new movements. Lift your right leg, inhale. Knee to the nose, exhale, squeeze. Inhale, sweep your right leg back, and then step it through, back foot flat, warrior one. We've been here before. So inhale, reach your arms straight up, and then place your hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Good. The inhale opens your chest. Maybe look up, fold forward as you exhale, and just hold. So every time we come into a new pose today, we're going to hold it for about five deep breaths or so. So it's your job to stay engaged and focused on your breath. Good. Yeah, so you really want to give your left leg a lot of responsibility here. Especially as we transition back to warrior one. Next inhale, reach your arms straight up. And then hands to the mat as you exhale. Take that traditional vinyasa. Right leg back, lower down slow. Slowly and sweetly. Inhale, open that heart freely. Downward facing dog, exhaling. Lift your left leg, inhale. Knee to the nose, hit that bullseye, exhale. Inhale, sweep it high. And then step it through, back foot flat. Rise, warrior one, no surprise here. And then hands behind the back, interlace the fingers there. Inhale, open the chest, and then mindfully fold forward as you exhale. Some of you will get inside of the knee. Some of you have big shoulders, will clip the knee with the shoulder. It doesn't really make much of a difference. But just be aware of what's happening in your body, you know. Notice if the left glute swings out to the left. Try to pin it back in. Notice if you're holding tension in your jaw and your neck. And stay with your breath through the transition. Back to warrior one. Inhale. Rise the arms high. Hands to the mat as you exhale. Left leg back. Synchronize. Your breath with your movement. Lower slow. 
Good cobra upward facing dog. Feel the rhythmic flow. And then downward facing dog as you exhale. Drop your head low. We'll take a bunch of cleansing breaths. Take a big inhale through the nose. <laughs> Open your mouth. <sighs> inhale, lift the hips and bend the knees. Step or lightly spring top of the mat, please. Good flat back inhale, lengthen. Fold in, exhale. Deepen, chair pose. Bend the knees, squat down, reach up. Hold chair pose. Hands to heart center. We're going to twist to the right side. First twist of the day. Hook your left elbow, outer right knee. Good. Yeah, so usually when you're in the twisting variation, the feet are together, the knees are together. But if you can find a twist with the feet apart, that's fine. Good. Good. Now we're going to build off of this next time around. But for now, come back to chair. Keep your butt low as you inhale. Switch sides as you exhale. Right elbow clips the outer left knee. Now just staying engaged with your breath. Yes, it's, di it's difficult to breathe deeply when you're twisting. But it's easy to try. And lucky for us, the benefits are mostly from trying, not from perfecting. Good. Back to chair pose. Inhale here. Forward fold. Exhale. Straighten the knees. Flat back. Inhale. Stay in the flow. Step or hop the feet back. Lower down slow. Good. Cobra upward facing. Never in a rush. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Let's add new movements on right leg lifts as you inhale. Right knee, right elbow. Exhale, outside. Inhale, sweep your right leg high. Left elbow, twist it across to the other side. Inhale, pull your right leg back. Step it all the way through. Back foot flat. Warrior one, we've been here before. Reach up. Hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, open heart. Fold forward as you exhale. Not going to hold this one. Let's go ahead and come on back to the top. Warrior one arms. And then like a poised warrior two, open up to the side of the room. Good. And so it's a new pose. We'll hold it. Perfect example of that square in the center of the body. Contract that square and then expand the bubble outwards. So it's like you're trying to touch the wall behind you, the wall in front of you, the ceiling with the crown of the head, the tailbone to the floor. And at the same time, you're trying to relax as you do it. Go ahead and turn your right palm facing up. Legs stay the same. Open that side body. Reverse warriors is what we call it. So instead of trying to touch just the back wall, try to touch the ceiling as well. Notice the integrity of your lower body. It hasn't changed since warrior two. And I'll just give it one more inhale here. Let's meet in downward facing dog. Vinyasa or skip it. We're kind of at that point where if you don't need to take it, don't. If you do, then do it. And then once you get back to down dog, next inhale, lift your left leg high. Left knee, left elbow, squeeze. Inhale, pull your left leg up, twist it across to that right elbow, maybe make contact. Inhale, sweep your left leg high, step it all the way through. Back foot flat, rise, warrior one, reach up. Hands behind the back, exhale, interlace. Inhale, peel the chest open. Fold forward as you exhale with breath. No rush, back to warrior one, that's your next inhale. And then like that, poised warrior two, open up as you exhale. Good. Yeah. The energy goes, the energy flows where the eyes go. So just choose where you want the energy to flow. Yeah, try to feel grounded, not just through the feet, but with your eyes. You know, they say from a psychological standpoint, if your eyes are darting around a room, then you're looking for an escape. There's only one exit, just so you guys know. Turn your left palm up, sweep it all the way back. Find that reverse flow. Back leg stays strong, side body gets long. Give it one last inhale, reaching back, and then downward facing dog, both hands on the mat. Take the vinyasa if you're keen on it, skip it if you're not. Good, open that heart, and then back to down dog if you cobra it. A big cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose. <laughs> Open the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, tilt your hips up. Bend those knees. Step or jump. Top of the mat, please. Good. Flat back. Inhale, lengthen. Fold in. Exhale. Deepen. Chair pose. Bend the knees. Squat down. Reach up. Listen, hands to the heart. Twist to the right as you exhale again. Going to hold here. We're going to add new movements on. So find your balance here. Shift the weight into your right foot. See if you can lift your left heel, just your left heel up. Yeah, so, yeah, for especially if you're new, just the heel. So you're on the tippy toes of your left foot. Good. 
Good. And let's go ahead and come back to chair. Left heel down, back to chair pose. Inhale, switch sides. As you exhale, right elbow clips the outer left knee. Heart pulls forward, right hip crease pulls back. And then as you shift the body weight into your left foot, just lift your right heel up. Yeah, so maybe all the way up on the ball of that right foot, maybe the tippy toes. Either way, that's all that changed. That's it. The breath remains the same. Good. Right heel down. Inhale, chair pose. Forward fold. Exhale, straight legs. Flat back. Inhale, find space. Step or hop your feet back and lower down with grace. Good. Cobra upward facing. Don't change your pace. Downward facing dog. Exhale. New movement. Right leg up. Inhale. Knee to the nose. Exhale. Squeeze. Inhale. Pull it high to the sky. Right knee. Right tricep. A little higher up. Inhale. Sweep your right leg back. Aim for that left tricep across your body. Inhale. Pull it up. And then step it through. Back foot flat. Warrior one. Inhale. Reach up. We've been here before. Hands behind the back. Interlace the fingers. Inhale. Peel your heart open. Fold forward as you exhale. Good, no rush, but come back. Warrior one arms. And then again, like that poised warrior two, open it up. Turn the right palm up like you're dancing with your breath. Reverse the flow. And everybody bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Start to drive the forearm into your right thigh. For those of you who want to go deeper, slide your hand to the floor. And then extend your left arm out and over your left ear. Hold the pose. But don't hold the breath. Good. Feel the outer right hip pulling under you. Good. And we're going to turn this into a little bit of a strength flow. So the integrity of your leg stays exactly the same. But on your next inhale, back to reverse warrior. Sweep it all the way back. Good. Exhale, forearm to thigh. Let's do two more just like that. Inhale, sweep it back like you have a bow and arrow in hand. And then exhale, forearm to thigh. Let's do one more just like that. Inhale, sweep it back. Don't worry, they're arrows of love. Downward facing dog, hands to the ground. Take the vinyasa if you'd like. Good. Just stay with your breath. It's the rhythmic flow. And back to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up. Inhale. Knee to nose. Hit that bullseye. Exhale. Inhale, sweep it high to the sky. Left knee, left tricep. Squeeze. Inhale, pull it back and then twist it across. Right elbow, maybe make contact. That's it. Inhale, pull that left leg up. Step it all the way through. Back foot flat, warrior one. No surprise here. Hands behind the back, interlace fingers there. Inhale, open heart. Fold forward as you exhale. Good. Coming back to the top. Just like oscillating warrior one. And then warrior two. As you exhale, starting to have a little fun, turn the left palm up. Inhale, sweep it all the way back. Left forearm to left thigh, unless you want the hand on the mat. Extend your right arm over the right ear. Take five deep breaths. And even when you hold the pose, notice how you're still kind of oscillating. There's still a flow of energy happening. The body can never be completely still. You see, we're even on planet Earth, circling around on this axis around the sun. You know, we're going thousands of miles an hour as we speak. Use your strong legs. Inhale, come back to reverse warrior. One of three. And then exhale, forearm to knee. Good. Two more just like that. Inhale, sweep it back for our strength flow. And then exhale, forearm down or maybe hand to the floor. Good. One more just like that. Inhale, sweep it back. Reverse warrior. Downward facing dog. Exhale, both hands down. Vinyasa's there if you want it. Cobra upward facing, you choose. Downward facing dog. It's up to you. Good. Nice big energizing inhale through the nose. <laughs> Open the mouth. Clear it out. <sighs> inhale. Wind your hips back. Bend your knees. Step or spring. Top of the mat, please. Flat back. Inhale. Continual flow. Fold in. Exhale. Drop your hips low. Chair pose. Bend the knees. Reach up. Hold. Hands to heart. Twist to the right. Left elbow out of right thigh. So some of you can probably guess where we're going next. Shift the weight into your right foot. Lift your left heel. And then try to lift your whole left foot. Good. Whether you fall on your face or you hold it for three hours, it's yoga either way. In fact, it's more yoga if you fall on your face and don't care than if you hold it for three hours and think you're good. Back to chair. Left foot next to right. Inhale. Switch sides as you exhale. Right elbow out of left knee, left thigh. 
Just shift the weight into your left foot. Lift your right heel. Maybe lift your whole foot. And then try to think about what you're going to eat for lunch or dinner. I dare you. Good. Slowly but surely, back to chair pose, both feet down. Forward fold, exhale. Stay technically sound. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Step or hop the feet back, lower down slowly to strengthen. Cobra upward facing thoracic spine bend. And then back to downward facing dog. Again, a little bit of a new movement here. Lift your right leg as you inhale. Right knee, right armpit, hold it. Just hold it there. Notice that it's uncomfortable. If you want the arm balance, you can always do that. Good. Holding poses equals building strength. Good. Inhale, sweep your right leg back. Twist it across to your left elbow. Maybe make contact. There's a balance here if you want it. It's not an easy one. Yeah, some of you have it touching the elbow. Some of you have it up to the armpit. Some of you can barely get it there. And some of you are about to throw up on yourself. Either way, inhale, right leg all the way back. Nice job. Step it all the way through. Back foot flat, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Hands behind the back, interlaced. Inhale, open the chest. Last one of these. Fold forward over that knee. Inhale, come back like the wave of the ocean. Warrior two, exhale, open up. Good, turn your right palm up. No surprise, reverse the flow. This time, everybody, right hand to the floor inside of the right foot. Or on a block. Place your left hand behind your back. Yeah, see if you can get that long left arm of yours to reach to the inner right thigh. And if you don't get it inside, yeah, no big deal. Just open your left chest. Maybe take your right hand underneath your right leg if you want to take a full bind. And then only for those of you who took the full bind, see if maybe you can straighten your left arm a little more. Good. Yeah, and then just breathe into what you feel. This too shall pass as it's a temporary practice. It's a temporary pose. Just like the waves of the ocean, every inhale, you're just gathering momentum. Every exhale, you're just washing all that trash up to the shore. Good. Wherever you are, bring your right hand down. Reach your left arm up. Keep your legs just like they are and see if you can enjoy pressing up to warrior two over the inhale. Nice. Go ahead and straighten your right leg as you exhale. Angle your left toes inwards a little more as we move into trikonasana. Inhale, reach forward towards the front wall. Exhale, drop your right hand down. Yeah, and just feel that femur bone, that right femur bone really plugging back and in. Yeah, sealing the outer edge of your left foot. Reach your left arm out and over your left ear. See how long you can get. But if you'd like to increase the intensity here, you can reach your right arm forward parallel to your left arm. And yeah, don't do it just because I mentioned it. It's kind of like going to a buffet, and then just because you saw that brisket, you had to eat it for that tofu for some of you. Good. If you eat everything on the plate, you're going to get sick. Good. Let's stay in the flow since it is a flow practice today. Right hand down, left arm up. Look down in front of your right toes. As you inhale, bend your right knee, scoot your left foot forward. As you exhale, lift your left leg up and off the floor. Right hand either in front of your toes or on a block. Half moon pose. Spread your arms, spread your legs. And, and become a starfish, a human land starfish here. All five points seeking the walls, the ceilings, the floor. And then if you want a level two pose, bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand, grab the top of your foot. And then the counterbalance, kick the foot into the hand. Wherever you are, stay with your breath. Now, for those of you who have your left foot, slowly release it. Everybody keep your left leg up. Take an inhale. Bring your left hand down to the ground as you exhale. Square your hips. So the left hip sinks down a few inches. But instead of taking a standing splits like you probably want to, come up to your fingertips. Pull your heart forward like a flat back. Little micro bend in your right knee. Reach your right arm straight up. Try to touch the ceiling with your right hand. Try to burn a hole through the wall behind you with your left heel. Try to breathe through all that compression. Hmm. Yeah, we call this the twisting half moon. Good. Take one more inhale here. Right hand down, feet together. Stay in the flow. Flat back inhale, lengthen out. Fold in as you exhale. Squat down, chair pose. Bend the knees, reach high. Listen, bring the hands to the heart, but twist to the left side this time. 
So the right elbow comes out of left knee. That way we have a fresh leg to work with. But we're going to put it all together. Shift the weight into your left foot and lift your right heel off the ground. Step one. Step two, lift your whole right foot. You can skip step three if you'd like. It's like a funky warrior three twist. See if you can straighten your right leg behind you with a little bend in your left knee. And then everybody move into step four as lightly as you can. Drop step your right toes as far back on that yoga mat as you can. So we're in the twisting version of crescent pose. Yes. And then if you need to set your right knee down, set it down. Otherwise, razor sharp with your right leg. Pull that hard forward and breathe through the compression on that diaphragm. We're just trying to stay in the flow. Good. Now, as you hug your inner thighs towards each other on your next inhale, let's slowly come up to crescent pose. And then as you exhale, both hands down to the floor. Keep the shoulders directly over the wrist. Step back to plank pose, feet together. Roll on to the outer edge of your right foot and reach your left arm straight up with the option to set your right knee down. If you set your right knee down, it's a modification. It shows me you're listening not only to me but to you. And this is a listening and breathing practice. Otherwise, extend your left arm out and over your left ear. If you want to take it deeper, just do it on your own. Otherwise, imagine as though that right shoulder, that ball and socket joint, you were standing on that right arm, much like we stand on our ball and socket joint of our hips when we stand up. Good. And then everybody, left arm slowly up, inhale, plank pose as you exhale. Hold plank, take a juicy inhale. Let's meet in down dog, lower slow if you want. Cobra upward facing, lift your heart, open your chest. And then back to downward facing dog. Let's stay in the flow. Do your best. Lift your left leg. Inhale. Left knee, left shoulder. Exhale. Hold it there. Let's see if you can enjoy it. Arm balance if you're keen on it. Good. Nice, Chris. Inhale. Sweep your left leg back. Twist it across to the right elbow. You don't have to make contact. It's progress. It's not perfection. Do what you can. Nice. Inhale. Sweep your left leg back. Exhale. Step it through. Last warrior one of the day. Back foot flat. Reach your arms straight up. Good. Bring the hands behind your back. Interlace finger. Inhale. Lift your chest. Like a humble warrior, fold forward with a little bit of humility. Good. Inhale. Back to vertical. Reach your arms up above. And then warrior two. Open up with a little bit of love. Turn your left palm up. Reverse the flow. And then let's find our bind. Left fingertips to the floor or block. Go inside your left foot. And then that right hand just cordially slides behind your lower back. And maybe it grabs the inner left thigh. Maybe you take the hands together full bind. And maybe you say, hey, Byron, never mind. I'm going to skip that bind on this side. I'm starting to feel a little fatigued. I need to stay with my breath. I need to stay in the flow. It's more important than exhausting my physical body. This too shall pass. Everybody bring your left hand to the floor. Reach your right arm up. At least find one cell in your body that loves this right here. As you press slowly up, warrior two pose. Straighten out your left leg. Maybe angle your right toes in slightly. Triangle, inhale, reach out. Reach, reach, reach. And then exhale, drop your left hand below your knee. Good, maybe in the ankle. If it's on the floor, make sure it absolutely certain should be on the floor. Let's say maybe about 5% of people should have it on the floor. That means maybe one person in here. Sealing the outer edge of your right foot. Extend your right arm over your right ear. And then maybe at least consider reaching your left arm forward parallel to your right arm. Also consider not doing that. Consider all things. Contemplate. Good. With your breath, left hand down, right arm up. Look down. Don't look away. Look down in front of your toes. Inhale. Bend your left knee. Crawl the left hand forward. Scoot the back foot in. Exhale. Lift your right leg. Half moon pose. Spread those arms. Yeah, don't be in a rush. You know, we live in a busy city already. You have all day to rush around out there. Good. At least yoga, slow it all down. If you want level two, bend your right knee. Reach back with your right hand. and Try to grab what you can. Top of the foot, ankle, or shin. But try to keep your hips even. That means stacked. Good. Good. Now for those of you who took the foot, slowly let it go. 
So keep your leg in the air, last inhale and half moon, bring your right hand down as you exhale, and then climb up to those fingertips. Square your hips first, really get that right leg straight, and then as you pull the heart forward, that's when you reach your left arm up. Yeah, do it at a rate, at a slow rate. That way you know when you're sinking your right hip down. That tends to be the trap here. Can you keep your hips level, but also open your left chest? It's okay if you don't. It's not wrong. It's just more right if you do. That open-hearted inhale here. Left hand down, feet together. Stay in the flow. Flat back inhale, pull the chest out. Fold in, exhale, squat down, chair pose, bend the knees, reach high. Hands to heart, twist to the right side this time. Left elbow, outer right thigh. Stay with your perfect form. Shift the weight into the right foot. And with the body warm, lift your left heel, followed by the whole foot. Now, if you really want to try that little warrior three funky twisting thing, give it a shot. Don't be surprised if you fall on your face, which is fine. And then as softly as you can, drop step your left toes. Crescent, twist. It's a different side. It's a different moment in time, which means you might modify. There is power in restraint, sometimes more than power in pushing through. Give yourself three deep breaths as you detoxify, remembering that the breath is the detoxification, the water that we drink, not just the simple twist. That's for flexibility. Hugging the inner thighs in. Let's come back to crescent pose again. Reach up. And then hands to the mat as you exhale, shoulders over wrists, back to plank pose, feet together, outer edge of your left foot this time. Reach your right arm up, and if you have an injury on your left arm, you know, why would you not have your left knee down? Probably because of ego, ego that illusion. But otherwise, extend your right arm out and over the right ear. Show me your yoga face. Now, your yoga face is a lot like your poker face. I shouldn't know if this is difficult. If it's difficult, the knee should be on the ground. Good. And then right arm up, inhale. Listen, place your right hand down a little different. Remember that grand finale forearm plank? Here it is. Lower your forearms down one by one. Good. And just stay here. Stay here and stay calm. Good. Yeah, you do the breathing. I'll do the counting. But not out loud, of course, because I don't want to freak you out. You know, I think it was in 2011 the record was set for this pose. Somebody held it for, I think it was an hour and 20 minutes. And then that's, that record was reset, actually shattered in 2014 with four hours, 26 minutes of holding this pose. Sometimes I don't even sleep that long. Good. Now, just so you guys know the options here, if you start to really fatigue and you want to stay in the pose, just set your knees down behind your hips. You'll still engage your core. Good. If you start to feel like it's too much from that point, child's pose is for you. Otherwise, just breathe. I love this pose because there's zero risk of injury. I mean, sure, you can injure your ego, but we need to injure our ego occasionally. There's zero flexibility required. Good, well done. Keep going. See if you can find an element of child's pose in this pose. You know, a little relaxing state. Good. Five more deep breaths, but yogi breaths. Yogi breaths. Don't speed them up. Make them slow. Make them thorough. Good. Four. Three. Two. Two. One. And zero. Lay all the way down on your bellies. Good. Reach your arms down by your sides. Turn your face to the right. Left cheek on the floor. And then back to non-activity. Let the floor check your pulse. Still stay with a rhythm in your breath. Use the breath to slow your heart rate down. 
Not in there, but go take a big inhale through the nose. <laughs> Let some sound out of your mouth this time. <sighs> Good. And then go ahead and pick up your face. Turn it to the opposite side. Let's do that one more time. So nice, big, full inhale through the nose. <laughs> Just purge it out of the mouth. <sighs> Nice job. From here, place your hands behind your back. Interlace the fingers. Set your either chin or forehead forwards. And then straighten your arms to peel your chest up off the floor. Again, you can use a towel or a strap here if you can't connect the hands. And once you lift your chest to a sustainable point where you can keep it up, point your toes back. Lift your toes and knees. We call it Shalabhasana, the locust pose with interlaced fingers behind the back. And it's a beautiful back bend. You're welcome to stay in it. If you want to turn it into a little bigger, we call it wheel or bow pose. Bend the knees, reach back with the hands, grab the outer ankles or the feet. It's not a better pose, it's just different. It might be a little bigger. Press the feet into the hands, peel your chest open, just for five. Good. Try to keep the knees not too far apart, about hips width, sorry, four. And maybe lift the knees a little bit higher, last three. A deep, deep breath for two. Let's give it one more inhale, full expression, open heart, and then release everything down. Nice job. Bring your thumbs by your upper ribs. You choose cobra, upward facing dog, or just press up to plank. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. Hmm. Really nice job. So all the real strong stuff's out of the way. Lift your right leg up, inhale, and step it all the way through as you exhale. Come up to crescent for a moment. And take what's called eagle arms. Wrap your right arm underneath your left arm. So you want to stack your elbows on top of each other. And if you can get your hands together, great. Lift your elbows up. Good. For some of you, leaning back here might be an option. But you've got to keep the tailbone down. So you're bending in that thoracic spine. Again, not the lumbar. Stay in the mid-back. This is what we call an internal rotation of the shoulders. We're rounding them. So it's going to feel pretty good here. As you move into warrior two with skill, spin your back foot flat, open your arms out so it's more of an external rotation, and then bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your right leg, pivot your right foot in parallel to your left, lift your chest, take an inhale, and then fold all the way in as you exhale. And yeah, if you want to reach out, hook your toes, or maybe just use the hands, crawl them behind you, do what feels good. Yeah, maybe it feels good to straighten the legs, maybe it feels good to bend the knees. How about you write this chapter of the book? Good. And then for some reason, it just sounds like somebody turned the faucet of your breath off. Good. Try to stay in the flow. Even when you hold the pose, there's still an oscillation, still a rhythm. And keep your legs like they are. Crawl over to your left toes and try to take your right hand to the outer left foot if you can. And then reach your left arm up. Yeah, if you can't reach your foot, keep your hand on the floor or a block, fingertips, palm, or block. And if it feels good, take your left hand behind your back and maybe wrap the inner right thigh or just open your left chest. See what, see what feels good in your body. Good. Try to keep a lot of the weight in the right leg here so your hips stay nice and level. It's kind of like in a tourniquet, that left shoulder. So just take one more inhale and then release your left hand all the way down to the ground. Crawl over to your right foot. Good. Spin your right toes to the front of the room and bend your right knee 90 degrees. Frame your right foot. Spin onto your back toes and heel toe your right foot all the way to the left side of the mat. We call it pigeon pose. So drop the left knee down eventually. Slide your left knee back. Pull your heart forward and up. We call it pigeon pose, right? So not dead pigeons. So it goes up first like a pigeon would. And then only... Only if you feel like leaning forward should you. So maybe come down to the forearms. Maybe make a pillow with your arms. Yeah, and then just kind of let it go here. Hmm. Yeah. Every exhale, the symbolic, has symbolic meaning to it. You know, there's a way to practice yoga is to have a mantra. You know, for every inhale that you take, you pick, you choose a word. That's something you want to invite into your life, say, say love. And then the opposite of that word is you exhale, feel it leave your body, in this case, hate. You, know, you can be creative and use whatever words you like. 
And it makes the practice more powerful. For those of you that are in the single pigeon, come up to your palms very slowly. Now press your arms straight first, and then recurl your left toes under. Lift your left knee. Come back to three-legged downward facing dog. Lift your right leg all the way back. If you want to bend the knee and open up the hip or flip it out or do any of that funky stuff, you're welcome to. You know, if, it, if it helps your practice. And this is coming back around a downward facing dog. Now let's do this last side. Lift your left leg, inhale, step it all the way through. Let's come into crescent. Stay on your back toes, reach your arms straight up. And let's find that nice shoulder stretch. So left arm is going to come underneath the right arm, eagle arms. Let's start to lift your elbows up. Good, again, if the leaning back thing sounds like something you want to do, just make sure the tailbone tucks underneath you. Yeah, so you're above the sacrum and lumbar spine. And feel the rounding of your shoulders. It feels pretty sweet to me when we move into warrior two. So take one more inhale and then back foot flat, open the arms and feel the external rotation of your shoulders. Keep your arms open this time. Straighten your left leg. Pivot your left foot in parallel to your right. Two options here, either hands behind the back interlaced fingers or touch your palms or fists together so it's a deeper stretch. Inhale, lift your chest. Fold forward as you exhale. And just take a few breaths. Last shoulder stretch of the day. Hmm. Good. And you know, your imagination can be a huge tool. And we're equipped with all the things we need when we're born. Our emotional guidance system to let us know how we feel. Our breath to help keep us calm. You know, there's a difference between using your imagination and letting your mind wander. Letting your mind wander is, what, what are you going to eat for dinner? What are you going to do after class? Using your imagination is using your breath like it's fire to melt the tension, which is ice. Good. Release the hands down. Crawl over to your right foot. Find your twist. Left hand out or right foot. Reach your right arm up. Yeah, so every exhale that you take, you're just chiseling that tension away. Consider taking your right hand behind your back, inner left thigh, and opening that chest a little bit more. You know, somewhere along the lines, a lot of adults kind of lost their memory or their memory of how to imagine. And so in a sense, this whole yoga practice is an unlearning process. It's not a learning process. Now give yourself one more inhale here. Release your right hand down to the floor as you exhale. Crawl over to your left toes. We're going to set up for pigeons. Spin your left toes forward. Spin onto your right toes. Bend your left knee. And then heel toe your left foot to the right side of the mat. Take your time getting into it. If you have any knee injuries, especially, lay on your back and take what's called thread the needle. If you don't know it, I'm happy to show it to you. And remember, go up before you go down. And then just see what you can let go of here. Hmm. You gotta come back to a mantra. That I am strong, I am not weak. Very slowly, everybody, climb back to your palms. Press the arms straight. Curl the right toes. Lift the right knee. Swing the left leg all the way back. Three-legged down dog. Flip it out if you want. And then we'll do
we'll just meet in the last downward facing dog of the day. Another day, another downward facing dog. Take a nice big inhale, wind those hips back, and then set the knees on the ground. Good knees together. Separate your ankles. Take a seat in between your feet or on a block. Close your eyes. Maybe recline back a little bit. And give yourself just a moment here to bring a little awareness to the tops of your legs. Hip flexors, quadriceps. And just imagine. Again, imagine as though you're breathing directly into the places you feel the tension. And a lot of these places in our body are just like a bookshelf that accumulates dust. You've got to dust it off. You've got to bring attention, just a little awareness. You have to know that there's dust on it first. And then for those of you who are on your back, we're going to all be on our back now, but with our legs out in front of us. So if you need to rock yourself back up to do that, then just kind of extend those legs forward and lay all the way down on your back. And we'll be here the rest of the practice, which is very short remaining. Take happy baby pose. Bend your knees. Reach out. Grab the outer edges of your feet. Pull the knees down towards the floor. Try to get all three points of your sacrum. It's shaped like a triangle onto the floor. And maybe massage those three points a little bit as you rock a little bit. Mm. And then if you'd like to evolve this pose into the wide straddle stretch, then split your legs apart. Maybe the hands will change positions to the inner thighs or hook the big toes. You, know, you choose. Hmm. The last three stretches to do. Knees together. So drop the knees to the left. Find a twist. You can stack the right knee over the left if you'd like. And open your right arm to the right. So do your last twist. The gravity. Trust that gravity will be enough to just help you twist here. Hmm. You know, trust is one of those things that escapes a lot of us in our society, which is interesting because all these involuntary things are happening all the time. We trust that they're going to keep happening to keep us alive. So trust is a huge part of your yoga practice. Trust gravity here. Come back to the center and then switch sides. Knees drop to the right. Open your left arm to the left. Hmm. Uh, because within that trust lies freedom. And after all, that's what this practice is about. It's about liberation. Um, so you don't feel so trapped in your body. Come back to the center. We'll come into the last stretch. Two options here. Either reach your legs straight up and grab the backs of your legs like a stretch for your hamstrings. We're coming to plow pose. Press your palms down, rock your feet up and over your head. So one of the two plow pose is more of a stretch on your lower back. Mm, it's going to take about six or seven deep breaths. Hmm. as slow as you possibly can through all 26 of your vertebrae. Start to roll out through each one until the last one comes down. And when it does, Shavasana. Extend the legs forward. Let the knees drape open. Let the palms turn up. And then back to that non-activity. And before we release the awareness to our breath pattern, let's collectively do one more thing together. Big inhale through the nose. Hold your breath. <laughs> Four, five, four, maybe sip in just a little bit more air. Three, two, one, zero, let it go. Ah. Let everything return back to its normal state. Breath, 
body and mind. Let it happen through stillness. As you absorb the experience that you just put your body and mind through, the deeper that you let go, the deeper the reward will be. And from here, place your right hand over your belly and the left hand over your heart. And before we jump up like a jack in the box and continue throughout our day, see if you can keep the energy that you've created and see if you can move throughout the day like you move through your practice in here. Two closing breaths together. The first one, feel the, the warmth of your right hand over your belly. Notice how you breathe. Take a nice big inhale through your nose, hold your breath, and then open the mouth, let it go. <sighs> the last closing breath, feel the hand that covers the heart, feel the openness. Let this breath penetrate that openness into your heart. Take a nice big inhale through your nose, and then open the mouth, let it go. <sighs> Thank you guys so much. Namaste.